Hello, my name is Izzy Common, also known as better known as Izzy, and welcome to a um a special edition to the channel. Um, I've been saying special edition to the channel a lot. I know, like everything's special edition all of a sudden. I don't get it. Um, but this is truly a um a special edition because this isn't like anything I've ever done. This is actually a discussion video for my first discussion video. Um, and these discussion videos will prob probably be laid out over time, um, depending on how many topics I get or get inspired by, by my life, or what's going on around me, or what's just happening here. And, um, my, the first topic that I will go over is family death, and how to get over it, uh, what happens during it. Um, so I would imagine that people who may be viewing this video, uh, may have encountered a close family death somewhere along the line, as of recently, or maybe they just, they're just, Throw me on YouTube and whatever. Um, but here we are. Here I am to talk about it. Um, my I haven't really given advice, good advice to anyone as of lately. So I'm feeding that. I have everything that I want to say kind of written down. Not everything, but just the main points I want to get through. So here we go. Uh, family death. Dealing with family death. There's a couple factors that really go into family death, and that those are pretty much who it is, where you were when you got the news. The cause of the death, relationship status, and relevance in the family. I'm just going to go over each one. Uh, the first one was who it is. Who was the family member that died? And, I, and now that I think about it, all of them kind of tie, tie together, and you'll see in a minute. Um, who it was. Who, was it your grandma, was it your dad, was it your mother? Um, and who it is ties in with relationship status. Because if who it is, like if the person who died isn't anywhere close to you, I mean, you might feel sad, but you're not. It isn't going to be a terrible loss in 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 you, and it's known that. I know you have some family member probably far, far away that you barely see ever, and you only see like every five years or so. Like, okay, I'd probably be sad if you died, but you know, I wouldn't be mortal, mortally hurt or anything. And then there's the, pe the family members that are close to you. You know, your parents, your your brother, your siblings, and you know, as much as they're just a pain to you, you may think every night like, oh my god, if they were gone, what am I ever going to do? So, you know, that's, that's what really, de um, goes into that. And then we have where you are when you got the news. You know, last time I think a really close family member died, I was in McDonald's. <laughs> as silly as it sounds, I was in McDonald's. And, you know, you can only imagine how, how difficult, I guess, to adjust to the, I guess, to the environment. Because at McDonald's, you know how McDonald's is. You're, you're, you're enjoying a little happy, you know, you're, you're enjoying your chicken nuggets and all of a sudden you're like, oh, your great grandfather died. You, you you drop and you're just like what I mean you really don't believe it and you know that's really the first instinct of when you hear something like that you're like oh my god I can't believe it this is really true you're just trolling me because I, hum I, I don't think us humans or us, pe us as people are just hardwired to instantly believe it unless you saw it coming that someone someone died Someone really close to you just died. Again, unless you saw it coming. Unless you were on hardcore drugs and you eventually they would fall. Most of the time, it's a, it's a surprise to you. And it's that shock that really, really can get someone. It was, the, it was the shock that really, really got me. Because, you know, again, I was at McDonald's. I wasn't expecting this news. I thought that, you know, he was alive and happy wherever he was. Or maybe not happy, but at least alive at, to, at, um, at the least. And, you know, it's that shock. And that shock is like... It's like the first time you've ever received bad news in your life. It's and it stays with you. It kind of traumatizes you for a bit, and it just puts this sh and the shock goes through your head. And it's like, how can I put this? It's like imagine a very very big titanium ball and a little pellet being shot, and the little pellets just bouncing all over the titanium ball all over the place. It's kind of like that. That's how. That's the best way I can describe the shock, at least in my head. And, you know, and that's what I also believe to make it, that's what makes the depression and um, the sadness go on is that shock, because the image is still in your head, it's always in your head, it always circulates in your head, and you're, and sometimes you're just, how, I can't, how can I get it out, how can I get it out, and, you know, that I'm actually going to talk about later, but there's um, uh, two more little points that I skipped over that I didn't get to talk about yet. And the first, the, other, the first one I didn't get the, I kind of skipped over was the cause of death. Um, what can really uh, impact the way you feel about how a family member dies is the cause of death. 
you know, if they passed away by natural causes, you got old, um, you know, it, it, it hurts, trust me, it does, but, you know, it's a lot, it leaves a, a, lot, a lot more pleasant, I guess, scar on you than to hear that, oh, your, your grandma died of cancer, you know, you got in a car accident, you didn't make it, you know, it is such, it, the cause of death can really, depending on what it is, can really hurt, or it could really ease away at least some of the pain. And, you know, if you had a family member that died recently of natural causes, you should really, really be happy that he slash she died of natural causes and of nothing else. Because if you're hurting about it now and you're thinking about it, you're crying each night. And, you know, imagine how, how much worse it would be if you got the news like, oh, he died of cancer, he died of a car accident, drunk driving, you know, he got ran over, whatever the story could be. You know, imagine how much more pain you would be into. And so... If you're dealing with something like this right now, just think and appreciate what you have now because I know in in the thought of pain and in the thought in the moment, you kinda linger around, it's like, damn, I wish you had I wish I had her or him back and oh my god, this sucks, I hate my life. And you know, you it's really easy to get into that and for the first maybe week or so, even month, I it's understandable. It's completely understand understandable, you know. It's not like Someone just broke your Black Ops in half, but someone broke your Xbox. I mean, it's sad too, but you're going to get over it eventually. On a family death, it's different. You get into a whole other different zone, and you start thinking a different way automatically. And, you know, and one way that you need to, I guess, find a way to start at least coping with it is to tell yourself, this could be worse. And I know it's and in every cartoon and every movie you've ever probably watched, it's that saying that line is just a plan of disaster because something always worse eventually does happen and probably it will but none, not immediately this a family death depending on what stage of your life you are it's only just a bump in the road because if you're like me and you're only you're not even in your 20s yet and you know you have your whole life ahead of you you know you know there's gonna be some bigger stuff that's gonna be getting, be getting in your way and that's just another reason to appreciate what exactly you have now um, getting into the last uh, little bullet I have here, we have relevance in the family. Now, there's a difference between relationship status and relevance in the family. Relationship status, sorry, relationship status is how close the family member was to you. The rela relevance in the family is how well that family member or maintain the family, or how it meant not just to you but to everyone in the family. Cause I mean, it could mean a lot to you. But, you know, it could be, he could be that, or that she could be that one important family member that was only close to you and no one else. Um, um, it's different when, you know, it's that one, that one family member that brings everyone together for dinner and for Christmas. Because, you know, that's that, that's that family beacon. That was that family, re family member that represented the whole family. And that causes a lot more just stress and pain. It's because it's the fact that you're losing your flag, you're losing your symbol. And, you know, not only you're sad and you're feeling the pain, but everyone around you is feeling, if not worse, your pain. And, every, and sadness is a sickness, guys. It's a very contagious sickness. If you're in a room full of, you know, tears and everyone's crying, you're going to feel, you're going to feel some hurt, too. And the more hurt around you is just going to build and it's going to add on to what you're feeling. And it, it, it escalates, it climbs and it builds. And that's why it's sort of, it's relevant. The relationships in the family as a whole is extremely relevant. Um, now, when a family death occurs, sorry if you hear my mic moving a little bit, um, when it occurs, there are certain things that do happen, naturally. Say, if it is someone close, uh, excuse me, sorry, I'm professional, but if it is someone close, there are some symptoms that you will probably go through, if not have gone through already, and bullets. There's depression, there's guilt, there's overthinking, and there's other symptoms depending on the person. I will go each bullet as I did the last. Now, depression. That's basic. Depression is depression. I really have no idea how else to explain it. Again, you know, life sucks. I hate this. I wish things would go back to the way they were. The general, I'm talking about the general sadness you get from death. You know, death is not a happy thing unless you're some evil, can evil guy that was praying for it, which you should never pray for death. Um, so that's just a general sadness. I can't really go on and on about it uh, too much, but I can on the next one. 
And that is guilt. Guilt is sucks. That's one of the worst one of the worst parts, the after effects about a family death or a close person dying. Is the fact that for some reason there's some switch in a hu in a in a human's brain that goes off when someone dies. And you start when someone dies you start thinking about all the happy times you had together. And then you think about all the times you could have seen that person, but you didn't because you know you didn't feel like it or you had you were too busy or you just didn't think yeah i'll see them next day and then you know the next day comes and then you fear he is dead and you know you feel extremely guilty i get that i get that so much because you know when i was when i had the chance to see family members in the hospital and everything i was too busy you know twiddling my thumb the next box and i'm like no i'll see him next time and um you know i did that constantly it wasn't like a one-time thing you know, I was like, oh, I'll see you next time, I'll see you next time, you know, I was just playing Xbox the whole time. And, you know, that's when I really decided, that's when I really, um, came to me that my addiction was a little bit too strong. Um, but, you know, that's what I really feel, felt really, really guilty about. The fact that I chose Xbox and, you know, the controller over my family members and how they're sick in the hospital and I didn't choose to see them because I was too be on Xbox when I clearly could have played later. And, you know... It's that guilt. It is that guilt. And it's so hard to get rid of. You know, uh, I'll give you even an, another example. Maybe, um, maybe before he or she died, you know, you had a chance to go over to their house for dinner. And they're like, no, we're going to go out instead. And so you call them, we'll, we'll go over the dinner, um, dinner like next Thursday or whenever dinner you go or whatever meeting time or meeting day you have. And the next day comes and then he's dead. That, that guilt can over flood you like damn I could have I could have helped him or I could have saw her one last time or I really wish you know that that guilt is just so poisonous and it poisons your mind and it sucks completely and you know it is something that comes but it has to go eventually there is a part of getting over that has to come eventually which I will get I will um discuss further on uh, for now, we'll just keep going through the bullets. I will get through everything. Trust me, guys. Bear with me. The third thing is overthinking, and I kind of just I kind of went into it um, in guilt. And overthinking can tie into other symptoms. Um, overthinking is basically um, remember how I said you know how you think about all the good times that that you had with the person before they died and how everything was great. It's basically that, except to a very extreme extent. Like, you cannot stop thinking about it, and you, you drown yourself in these thoughts constantly, and you're not allowing yourself to do anything else, and it clouds your schoolwork, it clouds your life, you can't eat, you can't sleep, it's, it drains you completely, and that's, that's the overthinking, that's, that's a part of the shock, I guess you can call it, that keeps pouncing in your brain, it's not letting you to move, not letting you to be free, and I'm just gonna bleed into this, then we have the other symptoms depending on the person. Now, I, I, when I was writing this down, I, I knew there, each person is unique in their own special way. And, you know, there's some things that you can pick up about a person to tell whether they're sad, they're angry, they're depressed. And that's what I mean uh, specifically. Sorry if I, you heard that burp. Um, let's say whenever you're angry, you, um, you sleep more. Or whenever you're sad, you eat, you eat more. Or... Whenever you're sad, you sleep less, or whenever, um, whenever you're sad, you work out a lot, or you don't work out at all. You know, those, those things that you can tell, you know, those special symptoms of how you tell the emotions of a person. And that's what it, that's really, um, what I'm talking about here. And, um, and I'm, um, that's that. Okay, now the final section, which is kind of the climax, is getting over. Getting over the poison, getting over the overthinking, getting over the depression, getting over the guilt, getting over the shock that constantly pounces through your head. Damn it, damn it, you hate that shock? I do too. Um, the best way to do it, or the most natural way of healing that I know is time. Time is a very beautiful, beautiful healer. Time has healed so much. In my life and in other people's life that I saw, time allows you to recollect and allows you to, you know, fix the damage that has been done by any, by any, um, by anything that you've been doing. And it allows you to, you know, get strength. It allows you 
to rebuild relationships. It allows you to do so much. Time is such a beautiful healer. And it is, it's honestly incredible. Our, time is one of my favorite healers out of everything. And, you know, time has done so much for me. And it's one of the things that I could really recommend. If you've tried so many things to get over and you don't know what to do, then all I can really say is let time handle it. Time is very beautiful in the fact that it may, time is actually kind of varied. It might take a couple of months, it might take a couple of weeks, it might come, it even may, type, may, blah, may take a couple of days. Or if you're not even that lucky or it was that someone um, that important to you, it might even take years. But the thing is, time always does it. Time always prevails and it always heals no matter what. And that's what I really love. It's always, even though it may not be, you know, right away, it always, at least, it helps eventually. It always comes to save the day eventually. And that's why I recommend it to anyone that's having, you know, trouble getting over and has tried everything in their power to get over but just can't. Just let time handle it. Just keep strong. Keep living your life. Try not to get, you know, those symptoms, the guilt get to you too much and try to, and I'm, I can't emphasize this enough, try to smile. Try to be happy. You have no idea how much just one smile a day can brighten up the rest of it. You know how many times, like, I've had, like, the worst days of my life. Like, I can't believe this could have sucked even more. You know, I hear a good joke, you know, I go to my YouTube commentaries that I watch, crack a big smile on my face, and everything is all better. A smile can do so much in your day. You just need to laugh. Learn to smile. Learn to appreciate what you have. And that I mentioned that earlier. The more you start to appreciate what you have and the things that you are, have been blessed with, or if you're not religious, have just, you know, in general, just the things you have in your life, you know, you will, and you will become a happier person. I mean, it may not be like, oh my god, I'm the happiest person alive, but you will notice some, you know, happier behavior in you. It's been, I actually think it's actually been proven, you know, by psychologists and people who study all that crap. You know, learn to appreciate. And if you're having trouble, I, I kind of learned this. If, you're, if you want to, like, turn up your day, try to name at least three things that you are grateful for that happened during your day. And try not to make it too general, to not be like, I'm grateful for my family. I'm, you know, try to be at least a little specific. Like, I'm glad my car didn't break down on the way to work. I'm glad it didn't rain today. I'm glad I have... I'm glad I had uh, pancakes left in the refrigerator. I'm glad I had syrup left. You know, those little things that count them. You know, that bring a smile to your face or at least keep you calm. That if that those things like did happen or didn't happen, that you would have a you know a lot worse day. And you know that's what I mean. Once you realize that you know this could have happened, and that's when you start to appreciate the things you do have. That's when you start being really thankful. Um, now. I really want to say this, that, you know, time heals all, you know, it's the message that's been passed down, a generation, the generation, Chinese person, the Chinese person, the movie, the movie, the poem, the poem, time heals all, you get it, we've heard it probably a million times, but, you know, there is an easier, there is other ways in time to heal yourself, and the best person or the best thing to, that can possibly heal yourself is yourself, the only person that has the most power to change a life is your life in specific is yourself. You have the most power in your life. You have, and it is very important that people start to realize that power. Because if you don't realize the power that you have as a person to change things around, to flip your life around, to make it happier, and to change others' lives by your happiness, you're not going to get very far in that. If you're dealing with a family death and you're just tired, and imagine the, the, sat, the radiation of sadness just spreading to everyone by, you know, by you being sad and you crying. It's not a very easy thing to take in and if you want to change that and if you realize this needs to change you need to start appreciating what you do you know what you have in life you need to realize the power that you have in your own life you know and you cannot you can't be depressed forever it is it's proof I'm okay I can't really say it's proven because sadly there has been people I can't I can't hide this there have been people that have you know died sad but Depression, for most of the time, depending on which case, most cases, um, depression does go away on whatever it is. And I'm not just talking about family deaths, it could be anything. But depression cannot stay forever. You know, it can stay for about half your life, but it eventually fades. Because eventually you realize that, oh my god, I've been sad all this time. 
and all this time I could have had a happy life I could have gotten over this and you know you need to realize this now so you have more time to enjoy your life and enjoy your freedom as a human being and enjoy what's out there because there's so much things you can do out there that you're not being able to do once you're tied down in whatever sadness you are in. and I know it's completely understandable that you know you're sad at a family death it just happened you have like you know you have an excuse to be sad for for a while but eventually it has you have to put it away you have to be like okay I've been sad for so long you know, I will always miss this person, I will always love this person, I will always keep them in my heart, but I have to move on and I have to continue being happy because this is what he or she would want from me most. This is what they would want in my future. You know, they wouldn't want to see me cry, they would want to see me happy, you know, doing what I love to do, chasing a career, going to school, you know, finding love, you know, getting married, having children, having a family. You know, this is what the, those people that loved you and cared about you would want to see. And, you know, because guaranteed, they wanted to see you happy. And what better way to show them that you are than to be happy? You know, appreciate, smile, you know, get back your social life. Get some friends together, and if you're if you're socially awkward, then, you know, find, find hobbies. Find things you are good at, and constantly do it. And, you know, you will find yourself to be a lot happier. And, you know, you, and it all comes with realizing the power you have to change your life and do things that you never thought, you know, you could ever do. And, and it all, and it also comes into self-esteem because while you're feeling guilty or you're overthinking, you may think that, oh my god, I missed that chance to see them, I'm worthless, I'm horrible, I'm a horrible person. You, that's another thing that you have to really wake up from. You are not a horrible person because you let, you know, you didn't see them that one time. Because keep in mind, you did not know that he or she or whatever person died, that would die the next day or would pass away. You know, you had no idea this was going to happen. This was fate. This was fate alone. You cannot control that. You didn't know that was going to happen. So why are you going to blame yourself? You know, it doesn't, I thought about this one night and it, it, it completely didn't make sense to me. You know, you're blaming for something that you had nothing, you had no control over at all. You know, so why blame yourself? I know, again, it's okay to feel sad. It's a, you know, it's a death of death. You can't, you know, it's very hard to escape sadness from that. But you need to realize that it's not your fault. Unless you completely just stabbed the person and shot the person point blank, it is not your fault. You did not kill that person. You know, yes, you know, it's sad that, you know, you could have seen him. But don't think it's your fault. You did not cause anything. You are a much better person than your, than you're putting yourself as you're putting yourself out there and again it goes into realizing what you are capable of you need to realize that you are more than what you think you are and even if you have that mindset you are still you are always more than what you think you are no matter what positive mindset you you have you know unless you're unless you're a yes man but i don't see a lot of those you have to realize this and you know Realizing this and putting this all together will and hopefully make you a happier person. Um, and and if it does, I couldn't be more happy for you. And I guess that's the closing of this video. I hope you enjoyed. I uh, have some Battlefield Gears of War and random gameplay in the background just in case, you know, you don't want to hear me ramble or maybe you don't care about it. You, you haven't been experiencing this yourself, so you just want to see some not so impressive gameplay, then you can see that all yourself. And if it, this helped you out, guys, or you enjoyed, leave a like, leave a comment saying this helped. Thanks a lot, Izzy, or you know whatever feedback you wanna you wanna give me. If you really liked it, check out some of my other commentaries, my other stuff. If you really, really, really enjoyed it, or you just wanna be nice to me, subscribe. And you know I will be I will be doing more. If um if you wanna keep these discussion videos going, just send me more topics, and I'll be more than happy to cover. Uh, the topics and share anything I know with you guys, any advice, anything I can give you guys. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you got, I left some impression of you guys, and I hope I left a good impression about you know what what I really think of the world, and you know, hope you really got something from this commentary or this 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 video. So yeah, thank you guys so much. My name is Izzy's coming, also known better known as Izzy, and I will see you guys later. Peace out, guys.